All right, I'm going to try to reproduce this noise. It's a heavy-duty clunk. Uh, I've got the car jacked up right now in the garage, but, and I'm not going to turn it on because it'll still make the same noise. Oh, God, it feels a lot harder to turn. There. It's a huge, um, I don't even want to call it a clunk. It's a bonk. A noise, <laughs> a boom. There. So when it's cold, it's worse. When, um, again, the car doesn't even have to be on, you don't have to be moving, you could be sitting in the same spot, whatever. Just turning the wheel makes a huge uh, boom clunk noise. So I thought for sure that it was a steering column. And I mean, every video I watched talked about noise in the um, in the suspension or in the while turning the wheel had to do with the steering column but the noises I heard on the videos were a lot smaller like little clicks and clanks and a lot smaller noises than this this is kind of big booming things and I was honestly scared that maybe it was the steering rack because the steering column uh, the steering shaft you can replace pretty easily uh, and it's not that expensive although the dealer I think wants Four hundred dollars, but any eight hundred, nine hundred total, four hundred just for the part. But anyway, you could find aftermarket parts for hundred, two hundred dollars. Anyway, side point: the steering, uh, the steering rack though is a lot more expensive, a lot uh, more difficult to change. So uh, I'm going to show you what I found out this problem was or is, and um, how I'm going to fix it. But it turns out it's the front strut. Uh, when you turn the wheel, the the whole it just by the way that the geometry of the whole steering system works the strut and the spring and everything have to turn and at the top um there's a um you know a joint in there where everything turns i haven't taken it apart yet but it's obviously rusted really bad in there and it just it must just be so corroded that when it turns and hits certain points it makes smaller noises that i can't hear here but outside uh, when I had somebody turning the wheel and then uh, I was taping it, I could even hear like smaller little clunks and noises and then you'd hear like a big boom or whatever. Anyway, um, so that's what this noise is. So it's not just like steering shaft or um, I can't remember, I can't remember, there were some other parts that uh, the people talked about. I didn't see any videos mentioning this though so i thought i would put it out there and yeah th it sounded like again really bad like you know like a real serious problem not that this isn't serious but it's a much simpler problem like i said than the uh than the steering rack and it's not that expensive the uh strut assembly including the spring everything which makes it a lot easier to replace when it's a full assembly uh two hundred dollars that's not bad. That's not a Toyota part. I don't know what Toyota would want for the whole assembly. Probably like $1,000 or something. And uh, you should replace uh, both of them. Uh, when you replace a suspension part, it's better to match them up, uh, you know, to pair them up in the front or the rear or whatever, just so that your car handles the same. Um, it's not good to have just like different tires and things like that. It's better to have everything matched up. So um, that's not bad, and the the replacement doesn't is not that hard either. Actually, I I don't even know if I'm gonna tape I'm gonna video the the replacement because there's a, a couple other videos out there that are really good. Um, it's it's really not needed for me to to do another video like that. I have video of the actual though the strut assembly when turning the wheel and what it's doing and the noises that it makes. Although you heard it in here, and this is the noise that you're gonna hear. So I, even if I video the noise outside, um, sure, you're going to hear, you hear that noise, but it's in the car is what you're hearing all the time. And that's what you're going to be more familiar with. So anyway, um, here's the strut. Oh, and please like, and subscribe. This video helped you out at all. Like, and subscribe to my channel. I do uh, a lot of Tesla things, but I also throw in a lot of uh, DIY car stuff, house stuff, everything like that. So, uh, thank you. Okay. Start turning the wheel. going
Oh. Let's see what it is. Okay. Do it again. Keep going. Keep going that same way. Okay, stop. So here is the old strut and it's this part here. Can't hold this, can't do all this one. This part at the top should be able to rotate. And uh, I was trying to rotate this by hand, but I, I can't. Um, it takes way too much torque to be able to rotate that. Um, I was hoping I could kind of turn it by hand and so that you can tell how uh, corroded this was, but I can't and uh, the new one, I couldn't turn the new one either. So I tried while it was on the car, you could see I tried to get some, some uh, lithium grease spray in there. It was hard based on the location and everything else. And as you can see, the lithium grease really didn't get anywhere. It needed to get in here. Uh, to do anything and it still wouldn't have really worked because uh, the way oh, look at that that, that came close <laughs> but it, it wouldn't have done anything anyway because it was so corroded in there that uh, you know it just kind of it made those huge pops and and uh, booming noises so um, you can pretty much guarantee that any any kind of oil in there really wouldn't have done anything it might have helped free it up to move a little bit better but it wouldn't have uh, it wouldn't have fixed it. Um, I put a whole new uh, Duralast strut in there with uh, the entire assembly. Honestly, I don't know if you could save money. I was going to say you could save money by reusing the spring. You could um, rent a compressor and compress and get the spring off. However, usually though you can only just buy the strut, and I then you would have to reuse this. I, I think they call it like a top hat or something. And that's the part that's broken here. So, uh, so I just bought a, a, a whole new assembly. It, it just makes the job quicker anyway. And replacing this isn't a big deal. Uh, it does take some work, but it's it's like two hours of work for a mechanic. Probably uh, you know four for a complete beginner. But it, it's really not that difficult. The hardest part were these links, the the sway bar links. I don't think I've ever had a car that I've been able to remove these from without just cutting them off and replacing them. And the, uh, this was about 60 bucks. The issue is that this one on the top just completely stripped. I have a hole through wrench where you can put a um, an Allen wrench in here to hold this and then use the uh, the socket on the outside. but. I don't care how much I sprayed this thing down with um, with penetrant oil, it I, I couldn't free it up, so um, I just cut it. <laughs> I even tried holding the the backside with uh, with some vice grips, and I've got a big, pretty big pair of vice grips, and man, I clamped them down super hard. Still, it, it wouldn't hold it. You know, it kind of messed up my vice grips even. It was just, I, I honestly, I, I wish I would have just started with buying a new one for 60 bucks. It was, I probably spent an hour trying to get this thing off. Big waste of time. This is the hole through socket I'm talking about. So how this works is it goes like this. You've got all your different sockets here. I think that actually requires a maybe a 17 millimeter. I don't remember, but... Uh, and then you put the Allen in there. So, you know, if you've got one that hasn't been on that long, you can get those links off. But if they've been on the car for any number of years, um, I've never been able to get them off without just cutting it. I think this is maybe the third time I've done it. And all the, every time I have to just cut those off. All right, so that's that. Noise problem solved.